All right, questions for Coach Spavital. Jake, Iowa State obviously had a lot of pressure on Will. Since then, he's not had as much. And certainly, protections was a key against a really good defensive front for Oklahoma State. So, what have you guys done better? How do you <coughs> carry that over this week? You know, I think we uh, we kind of went back to the basics of things with uh, our with our points with Matt. You know, we just said, hey, be confident in it, make one point, and we'll play off the rest. Where where Will has a pretty good understanding of his hot reads, and um, I think that's kind of helped us with the protection standpoint. Yeah, now we're going up against a very good Oklahoma State team that um, will catch you off guard with some blitzes. They'll do some things that are uncharacteristic that you don't see very often, and uh, and they'll get you. You know, that's why they're one of the top teams in the country in sacks right now. So uh, we do have a tough challenge with that moving forward, but. I think with the success with the protection that they've had over the past couple of weeks, it's been simplifying it up front, and and uh, and Will's been doing a really good job at understanding his hot reads. I know you mentioned before the year using the tight ends at Texas A&M and Cal. It seems like every week we talk about how good the tight ends are playing, but have you ever been around a program where you've had two tight ends produced like this in a season? I have not at that high of a level. Um, you know, looking out there uh, Saturday and watching Wesco play, I thought he took that game over. Uh, pretty impressive to watch. Um, but you look at Giovanni and what he brings to the table as well, it's pretty fun to watch those guys compete where we don't have to be in the 10 personnel as much anymore, which that was something last year that we were in all the time was 10 personnel, and we wore those receivers down throughout the course of the year. So looking back at where we are now compared to this point last year, our receivers uh, haven't even done nearly the amount of yardage, uh, and that's based off of the play of these tight ends. We've seen a lot of running backs this year. You had that kind of three, four-man thing going. The last couple weeks been a lot of Petaway, a lot of McCoy. They're the older guys. Has that experience kind of helped them this time of year, you think? I think so. It, you know, the you get down to these games, and there's a lot on the line, and these guys have just consistently made plays before. and. I think they're playing at a really high level right now. Um, and you go into it with the mindset of you're going to play them ball and try to get in their touches. And we, and we started off that way. And you just see the hot hand. And it's a no-brainer to you guys, too, the two that are just uh, you know, kind of jumping off the field when you look at it, that these guys are making some big plays. So you just typically lean on Kennedy and Petaway. And I think a lot of that has to do with the maturity of them. You know, I think Petaway and Sink are going to be really good players. I do. And, you know, the, you're going to have one of those games, I hope, in the future where, you know, Letty jumps off the page, you know, and you're like, that's what we want to see. But um, I just think consistently over time, just the amount of ball that those two have played with Kennedy and Petaway, it's just their leadership's just taking it over in their maturity. With, with the analysts, did the, the process of getting to know Jim Knowles versus Glenn Spencer, did that begin last summer either? Yeah, you know, it, I've been familiar with them before and um, gone up against them before and and uh, you know you had a pretty good idea but you still you, you study it um, you know you try to refresh yourself over the summer and you know just being a later game you have a lot of tape to watch on the guy as well so uh, interesting um, on the move but you know, it, it's, it's part of the business, and I, th I think he does a good job, and, and it's a different test. It's a different style of defense that we're used to facing versus Oklahoma State. So um, it's going to be a fun game. What Jim's attitude is being the difference in the language terms? Just in terms of he play, he's more aggressive. He plays a lot more man, a lot more exotic blitzes. Um, that, that's why it's going to be a fun game because you know, he can catch you for a negative yard play real quick. Or we can hit him with a big play. You know, it's, it turns into a chess match, match a, a guessing game, and, and uh, it, it keeps you. He keeps you on your toes the entire game. How much have you got a guy who, like Dana, Dana called it, creating chaos, is what he said that, that Knowles likes to do. When you've got a guy who likes to do those sort of exotic blitz packages and stuff, how much is sort of keeping to what you do and not overreacting to what they do? a part of, of playing that not start second guessing right. yourself all the time. That, that's a lot to do with it, you know, especially with um, the, the question we just talked about on terms of protection. You know, you, you don't want to, you know, get into that guessing game where he's bluffing over here and he's blitzing here and we're, we're getting into a, uh, where we're getting into the wrong points from a protection standpoint. But it, it's about really 
playing with a good tempo, maybe keeping them off guard with um, keeping the same personnel groupings out there and getting in different formations and making sure that they can't get that in as clearly as they want to. You know, so it, a lot has to be dictated by the pace of play, but it's also about keeping it simple on those kids if you're going to play fast so they can make their points and they can execute what they believe is clean. A couple of weeks ago you talked about you had conversations with Will about sometimes not always trying to make the big play, just make the smart play, get rid of the ball. Are you seeing progress in that area? Are you happy with maybe how we just got rid of the ball? Cause it seemed like the Baylor game, he got rid of it a few times. Right, and I think he did this past Saturday versus TCU. Uh, I thought this past game was Will's best game he's probably ever managed. You know, and just there was times where he was going through his progression, there was protection breakdowns, and he threw it away. There was times where he got to his hot reads immediately. Um, you know, the Gary Jennings route was the second for the touchdown, was the second progression. Uh, there was multiple times he got to his third progression. So I, I thought overall how he was managing the game and getting through his progressions, checking out of bad run calls, um, you know, I, I just thought he, he's just got a really good grasp of what he's trying to accomplish right now. Having said that, Wesco was your player of the game. What did he do for your head will? <laughs> That's a tough question. But um, I, I just thought he, when he looked at it, and I think you guys probably saw it too, Wesco was taking that game over. You know, he, when he was catching the ball, his yards after contact was, it was great. You know, he was making people miss in space. Um, he had a tough challenge at blocking number 91 for TCU, who I think is a very good player. And he brought it every single play and, and uh, with the physical nature. And that's why those runs started popping so well for us. So he just brings not just uh, what you guys see with the catches and him getting upfield and the touchdowns and all that. It's just that added element that, you know, selflessness of him and he's laying his whole body out on the line to, to get that run game going. So uh, we just thought overall he was helping us out the most out of anybody. Are you seeing defenses start to adjust to him a little bit and maybe change things? Is that helping you a little in other areas? Um, or not yet? I, th I think it just adds to it. I think they have to account him when he's in the, in the game that where there's a possibility of him catching the ball. So you look at the threats of our receivers out there and then how we're implementing the running backs in the pass game, you know, you got to throw Wesco in there as well, which it's pleasing from my standpoint where, you know, our hit chart with these kids are all over the field. So it, uh, it, it's just that good addition where they have to account for the tight end with the possibility of him, you know, getting out on a pass play, which that loosens up the box a little bit that allows for the run game to hit a little bit better. Last thing here, do you think more about kind of get less of the ball? Where maybe before when you started it was you know you go into that thinking hey we gotta give him the ball a little bit? Yeah, I thought um, really the Baylor game was when I, I was like I need to get him guaranteed touches. You know, instead of letting the game kind of come to him, let's design some plays where he gets his automatic touches. How fun is that when you have, over the course of a season, like, oh, I've got this new toy to play with? <laughs> yeah, it, it, uh, it adds a lot to, you know, to the game playing aspect of it. When you, when you start going into it, you, know, you didn't know that he was going to be taking games over like he was these past couple games. So, you know, you have the touches where David gets the ball and Gary and the shots for Marcus and, and the running backs are naturally going to get their touches. But you just start expanding that playbook and your call sheet gets a little bit you know, longer in terms of how can I get West Coast touches now and how can I get Giovanni out there in space. So the, ad, the addition of these tight ends brought a lot more to uh, um, our call sheet, which our call sheets are getting more in depth now and longer with the verbiage, which is making it harder on Dana to read it. <laughs> <laughs> when you face a team that is up-tempo offense, do you have to sometimes slow your tempo down a little bit or do you just get in the track of um, it, it just depends on how the flow of the game's going. You know, I think uh, if you can jump up and, and you can control it and, and you don't have to use that tempo to, to constantly be in a rhythm, then yeah, you got to utilize that and try to save the defense as much as you can. But, you know, if, if, if they're going back and forth, you got to turn it into a shoot you know, So uh, there's a lot to it. It's more about the flow of the game more than anything. Jake, along those lines, how much attention do you pay specifically to first down? Rather have second two than second ten. You don't want right. to hurry up and open. Exactly. So you can yeah. specifically spend time on what we do on first. 
I, I spend a ton of time on first downs. I do. Um, because I think that gets us in the rhythm of that drive, especially the opener. Um, but it, it gives us that that's where when we are the best is when we're the most efficient on first down. And, you know, like I, I think uh, we have enough calls, you know, to make up for your second down. If you're behind the chains the second down, you always have these plays that are to get you back on track. But you like to get these calls on first down where you can get something, uh, you know, more than, you know, a four or five yard game where you can get the flow of that drive going. And it took me a while in TCU to get going. And after really about the fourth, fifth drive is when, is when we started hitting those those first down calls. You can study teams to figure out third down tendencies and red zone tendencies for defense. And so are there first down tendencies? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. There's a lot of teams that the first down tendencies, there's really a lot more tendencies on uh, on second down than anything. If you get to a second and short, you know, you, you try to see how teams are. Some teams will play drop eight on second and short and just expect you that that's going to be a high percentage where you're going to take a shot because it's going to be a manageable third down situation if you don't get it. Um, so, you know, you, you just got to study all aspects of the game in terms of how that how the defense coordinator is going to call it. But there are tendencies that we study a lot of and try to pick up on, and, and that's how you try to base your play call. Is, it, is there a difference coaching and playing offense at home as compared to the way? <sighs> no, not. Probably for the, that's probably more of a question for the players than anything, but I have the same mindset. Um, you know, I, I think I think our kids do like playing on the road in terms of uh, it's kind of that us versus the world mentality. You know, there's there's just a, a hostile environment where fans are saying things to you as you're coming off the sidelines. Where I, I think they just kind of play with the chip on their shoulder. You know, I, I think that's more uh, you know player by player than anything. Along the lines of what Mike was saying, do you wrap a specific situation? Say, for instance, Oklahoma State has got good pass rushers and they sack. Do you? Rep the second and long or the third and long, do a little bit more that weekend just to get an idea of what you're going to do in those situations? Yeah, we, you know, you start off taking their top blitzes, their top coverages, and on Tuesdays it's teaching and, and putting it into play just so they can visualize it. And then you get to Wednesday, that's when you start scripting it into scenarios where we drive the field when we do our team situations. So, you know, you're working first down calls, you're working your shot plays, you're sprinkling in third downs, and you, you get all the way through your red, high red zone all the way into goal line. So uh, you just you just mix it in and out, and, you know, you have chain, chain crews out there just uh, marking every single play. There's a lot of thought that goes into the scripting, and we just try to make sure that we're all on the same page, um, you know, going into the game. And then you get to Friday, which is we're going to do the same thing where we work all those scenarios as well and make sure that those kids are seeing everything that we believe that they're going to do to us. Bill was complaining about the offensive outfit the last year game has been amazing, but with, with Sam sort of going into a, an individual ball for a while, and then he makes that big play down the sideline the other night, was, is that just, there's only one ball to go around, or was he you know, having that just a um, soft month? Or you know, I think there, there's a lot that goes into that. You know, I thought, I thought he um, People are paying more attention to him. You know, he does bring unique speed that they will bracket coverage him as well. Um, you know, that was the that was part of playing with tempo. You know, that we caught him in a, in a situation where Marcus was one on one, and and that defensive back did a good job of running with with Marcus, and he made a great play. But you know, I I, I think there's a lot of factors that contribute to that. Um, I think you know he he did have a he's been having some up and down games and it was good to see him finally get back on track with some things which that naturally happens you know I thought David Sills had a few drops in this game that he probably won't back um, but you know you can you can critique every kid that way but uh, I, I think just over the course of time you know if that we've been spreading the ball around now though the, the opportunities for markets are, are going to come up okay thanks coach